Lamar Jackson has been in the league since 2018, and he ended up starting for the Baltimore Ravens after Joe Flacco went down to injury, and they never looked back since. So since 2018 is 2024 now. So let's count one by one. So 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 2024. So this is his seventh season. Lamar Jackson has won MVP. So the best player in the league at the quarterback position two different times. He's won the award two different times. And with that award, he received combined 99 out of 100 votes because the first time he won unanimously, so everybody voted for him. The second time, one voter voted for Josh Allen. So he won 49 out of 50 votes. So Lamar has done that. He's broke countless records. He's had a bunch of games where he throws for like four or five touchdowns, especially when it's against the Miami Dolphins because it's like extra personal with them. But Lamar, he's led the league in touchdown passes before. He's done a lot and accomplished so much as a quarterback. That's why when I see lazy takes like these, why? Why are we going back to that? Why, why is that still even a thing? I feel like it's, it's weird because, especially coming from Ryan Clark, too, even though I do remember way back like not too far back ago but there was i think it was around lamar jackson contract negotiation time because a lot of people said a lot of ugly stuff about lamar jackson oh i won't forget a lot of it. it got real nasty but anyway ryan clark he said a couple years ago if he was starting a franchise that if he had to choose between kyler murray shout out to kyler murray by the way if he had to choose between kyler murray and lamar jackson he said if he was starting a franchise he would take Kyler Murray. And he was like, oh, every NFL GM, they would too. And, da, 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 da. and I was like, oh, really? <laughs> really? But e even when you look at that one, that's not so bad compared to what he said this week about Lamar Jackson and Jaden Day. Let's just listen to it and then we'll discuss. The practice every day. Okay, I'm going to say this. And I think Lamar Jackson is one of the best quarterbacks I've ever okay. seen. He's one of the he's one of the greatest all around football players okay. that's ever played in this league. Right now, two Today. Games, in five games, Jaden Daniels is a better passer than Lamar yeah, Jackson. So five games into his NFL career, Lamar Jackson in year seven, Jaden Daniels, five games into his NFL career. Jaden Daniels is a better passer than Lamar Jackson. Jackson see we knew and we know comparisons are going to come they happen all the time but it's this one right here this is one of the only ones that I really got an issue with if you're going to say somebody's a better quarterback than Lamar Jackson okay go ahead and say it. even though after that game last week ain't nobody better than Lamar Jackson right now he's the best in the world right now but anyway if you're going to say somebody's a better quarterback than Lamar Jackson okay if you're going to say somebody's more clutch than Lamar Jackson okay if you're going to say somebody has better playoff performances than Lamar Jackson okay but why do people keep going to this whenever a quarterback is either going against or being compared to Lamar Jackson? Why do they always go straight? Oh, is, is this quarterback a better passer than Lamar? It, it happens every time. Like, you, you could go, you could watch a game between uh, Joe Burrow and Josh Allen, just using them as an example. And if one beats the other, whether they both have great stats, if one has good stats and one has bad stats, if they go against each other and one of them wins, you never hear the question asked, oh, is this quarterback a better passer than that? You never hear that stuff, ever. But when it comes to Lamar Jackson, they always go to that. Why are we doing that after seven years? We're going into year seven. Why, why are we still doing that? Bring that up. Like, it, it just, it, it's just one of the laziest things in the world to me. Because that, that's the argument that they go to every day. They don't make it about winning. They don't even make it about completion percentage. They don't make it about deep field. But they, they, oh, is this guy a better passer than Lamar? What? It's always that. And it's the weirdest thing but they just constantly keep going back to it over and over and over and, and obviously Ryan Clark he's not the only one because other people will bring this up too it's, what else does he have to do what, what else does he need to prove and what's what's crazy about this too is that 
people will say, oh, Lamar Jack, he ain't that good of a passer. The, the recency bias is a real thing, as we know. Recency bias is real. So with recency bias being a real thing, didn't you just not see the game last week? Well, Lamar was literally, because I, I know people have used the excuse before, oh, Lamar only passing passes around the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage. Blah, blah, blah. That game last week, it gave you a reminder. It didn't show you, because if that game would have showed you, that, that means you would have been seeing it for the first time. So it didn't show you, but that game gave you a reminder against the Bengals. Lamar can throw that ball. That's, it's old news that Lamar can throw the ball. But people, if you say, oh, Jaden Daniels is a better passer to football than Lamar Jack. It just seems like he's doing a thing where, and what's crazy about it, with Ryan Clark, he be, he be really defending Lamar Jackson. And look, I ain't saying that Lamar Jackson needs to be defended for each and every single thing that he does. Because he doesn't. If he does something wrong or makes a bad play, need to be called out on it. Need to be spoken of. If he makes a good play, makes an amazing play, that needs to be spoken of too. It needs to go both ways. But... We got to stop just going back to this, this. It just, to me, it's just, it, it, it's pointless. It's pointless, and it's just regurgitating that same thing over and over and over. And it's, it's, it's almost like, man, what, what are we going to say about Lamar Jackson? How, how can we sort of tear him down to, to, to build this other guy up? And it almost makes you think, too, like, man, um, Lamar is, like, he must really be a benchmark, like the benchmark for a lot of players, a lot of quarterbacks, um, because he is used as an example. When they, when they want to prop somebody up, one of the first guys that they go to, it ends up being Lamar Jackson. So I was disappointed in Ryan Clark with this one. And you know what I did, too? I made sure I watched the whole because I, I thought that maybe all right, you know how people would just post a clip or what somebody says without context. But. That was it. Like, they were having a conversation about the upcoming game. Obviously, you saw the picks at the bottom of the screen. They were having a conversation about the upcoming game between the Ravens and the Commanders. Uh, and they were going back and forth about, oh, which quarterback's going to do this? Which quarterback's going to do that? The defense, they, they were having a whole discussion about the game. And then Ryan Clark, he just had to make sure he got that out. And what made it worse, in my opinion, about him staying, saying that is that he even said five games. He highlighted that. It's only been five games. But Jaden Daniels is a better passer. Than Lamar Jackson. <sighs> one, you yeah, know, I was about to say one day I know that the, the lazy takes are gonna end, but they never will. So Ravens injury reports are back to looking normal with that long list of players. But thank goodness that hey, most of them will be good to go. But there are a few that are gonna be out. That list is as follows: uh, Malik Harrison, who did not practice all week. Uh, he is going to be out. No, a lot of Ravens fans been getting on Malik Harrison. Um, but in my opinion, the bigger issue has not necessarily been Malik Harrison's play, but just the coach putting him in bad situations, situations where they are not his specialty. So if Malik Harrison, if he's setting the edge, he got his hand in the dirt and whatnot, he's playing run. OK, that's Malik Harrison that we need to see. But out in pass coverage, out on an island. He does not need to be there. So in my opinion, that's more a coaching thing. So hopefully uh, well, in the future when Malik Harrison does return, he won't be put in that position this weekend because he won't be playing. But hopefully when he does return, that can be an adjustment that's made. But back to this injury list. Uh, somebody else who is out still is Arthur Millette because uh, he didn't practice all week. Uh, he got the hamstring injury. He's returning from injury reserve. So again, just a reminder, he has until the end of next week to be placed on the active roster. If he's not then that's a wrap for his season. Now, I wonder um, if he's not all the way ready to come back, if the Baltimore Ravens, they probably would just put him on the active roster, but have him inactive uh, on game day until he's ready all the way, just so they don't lose him for the entire season. Because I, I don't think they even want to play with that. So I think one way or another, Arthur Millette is going to be back. Um, but it also somebody else who will be out uh, is Broderick Washington, who also did not practice all week this week. Uh, well, Marlon Humphrey, who, again, he surprised me. I, I was like, well, Marlon Humphrey's actually practicing? Well, Marlon Humphrey, he was limited in practice. He's questionable right now, but he'll probably go. Marlon, Marlon Humphrey probably go. Uh, but it, it is nice that even worst case scenario, if he doesn't go, the fact that he's available, that's, I would just, I, I just did not think it was going to happen. So, again, shout out to John Harbaugh because Harbaugh said it. I ain't believe him, but Harbaugh said it when they asked about Marlon Humphrey's injury and other people who were missing practice like Rashad Bateman, Ronnie Stanley. Harbaugh was like, oh, it's just after the game stuff. We, 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 we should be good. 
And I was like, mm, how about you? Mm. But he obviously wasn't lying. So now we hear my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. Now, before we do it, I, I got to speak about something because shout out to my guy, Ricky Williams, because in yesterday's video, y'all make sure y'all check out his question that he asked. I saved the best for last uh, and really the most powerful for last because he talked about uh, mental health. He just talked about us needing to speak on stuff that we normally wouldn't speak of. Uh, and he didn't talk about necessarily speaking about any negativity, but I got to take it there real quick because as y'all know on here on YouTube, it can be lovely place. It can be a very fun place, very happy place, positive place. But not everybody is so positive. And, and that's OK, because that's life in general. But here specifically on this channel, in the comment section, it can be a great place. Sometimes it can get a little ugly from time to time. But um, I think it's important. And normally I would not address something like this because this has happened like a million times. But I, I normally wouldn't address it. But I felt like I had to. And I just wanted to anyway, because yesterday um, in the video, the video where we talked about um, Marlon Humphrey with uh, his just being surprised that he was back because y'all know after that game, I've been saying like, <laughs> I don't think Marlon Humphrey going to be playing. Uh, but anyway, um, somebody had the video was 19 minutes long. Uh, somebody had commented. They were like, oh, uh, just in case you ain't feel like having to watch wait through a whole 19 minute video um th it, this is about marlon humphrey being back from injury saved you a watch or something like that and i saw that i was like man it, i just i felt bad for that person because they're making assumptions that aren't true and then they're spreading misinformation which also isn't true because with all videos um whatever the the the, the headline is whatever the thumbnail is and the title of the video is that's literally the first thing we speak about. You don't got to wait. Like if it's a 20 minute video, we don't make you wait till 15 minutes in to get to, to hear whatever we're talking about as the topic. We, we take from jump literally the very, very beginning of the video. Um, and if that person would not have assumed um, and you know what happens when you assume like I know that person. Knows, but what they did was they potentially take away from y'all because. That video, we spent the first four minutes, maybe three and a half minutes, four minutes talking about Marlon Humphrey being back. And that was it. That was it. The remaining 15 minutes of the video was questions from y'all. So but but that person decided they wanted to be negative and for, for whatever reason. Again, I, I don't know why. I don't know what the issue was, but they wanted to be negative for whatever reason and took it upon themselves to try to spread that negativity. And I, nah, I, and a lot of times what I do, too, I try to go through the comment section and I try to reply to as many comments as I possibly can because I do not want to feel like people are just typing that comment into thin air, typing that comment for no reason. Because I, I hate that because y'all make this channel what it is. I mean, it's y'all. And again, like I always say, my favorite part of these videos is where your questions are featured because y'all are special. And that is my way of trying to give back to y'all and let you know that you are special. Um, so when people do stuff like that, I'm just like, ah, for what? What, what? what is the reasoning? But anyway, I just had to. Let y'all know. Hey, Ricky Williams, shout out to you, man. I, I appreciate you for um, that PSA yesterday because had it not been for your PSA, I probably would have just kept that in because I, I do, especially when it comes to stuff on this channel, because I don't I don't like like focusing on negativity like that on the channel because the channel is not about that. This is not what the channel is focused on. It's not what it's centered about. It's, that's not what I'm about either. Um, but uh, your PSA message from yesterday it just made me want to talk about that because uh, I do see that enough times on here. Not too much, but enough times. Um, and most like 99% of the time, I won't even address it. I just block and move on, keep it moving, keep it pushing, whatnot. But I appreciate you, Ricky Williams. So thank you for thank you for that message from yesterday, that PSA. Now, um, on to the questions. And you know what's funny, too? Um, when Ravens are losing, oh, our, our emails stack piling up going crazy ravens lose oh everybody's sending questions why this why that da, 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 da. ravens winning Pfft. i gotta search for emails now it ain't that bad but we don't get nearly as many questions when ravens winning but anyway let's get to the first one it came from a team keep it clean patron my guy more and he said uh, do you think uh, our past defense suffers from playing a run heavy team in practice every week Ooh, good question but no because Ravens have had much better pass defenses in the past um, than they have in right now. Uh, and they've been a run-heavy team for a really, really long time. Really, the majority of their existence, they've been a run-heavy team. Run heavy and play good defense. So, no. That's, that's a good reasoning, though, a good thought. 
but I would say no. Um, but anyway, let's continue. He said, um, Derrick Henry probably whooping them boys. <laughs> Derrick Henry probably whooping them boys all week in practice. They tired by the time they get to Sunday and are so used to a running offense instead of passing. If you notice, our run defense has given up nothing all season. They do not allow you to run on them, LOL. But see, but how would uh, – see, that, that's where it wouldn't make sense. Because if Derrick Henry's whooping them like that, then how would they get better at run defense? You see? Like, if they were – if Derrick Henry was not doing so well and he was struggling and whatnot, then we might be like, oh, man, that defense, they hold him down. And then there are all these other defenses holding him down. But they just – that – yeah, it just – to me, it would make sense. I, I see what you're saying, though. Um, by, I, but I, what I think you mean is that since they go up against a Derrick Henry – and Derrick Henry be doing his thing. The Ravens' offense, in practice, they just, like, run heavy, run heavy, run heavy, run heavy. But pass is like, oh, we'll do it when we do it. I don't think it's like that, though. I think it's important to practice a lot of both. Regardless of what the game plan is, it's important to be able to get it done in more ways than one, which I think the Baltimore Ravens do. And the Baltimore Ravens have shown, like, we can get it done in multiple ways. It ain't just got to be Derrick Henry. It ain't just got to be that. Uh, we can do it a bunch of different ways, too. But, um, yeah, I just I, I think it's, it's just no excuses. Um, I, and I, I think the biggest thing has been miscommunication. Can the defense stop the highest scoring team again? Next question came from my guy, Aaron. He said, hey, man, how's everything going? Everything is going really, really good, Aaron. He said, I understand that the Bills team didn't have a scary receivers, but nevertheless, to say we stopped them. Uh, we held the highest scoring offense in week four. Can we do it again Sunday against Washington? Don't let scary Terry burn the secondary. Uh, we have to stop the run game as usual. We'll put Marlow and Nate in the slot. Put Brandon and back to deep put Kyle in the timely blitz put the pressure on Jaden and put uh, him put the have him put the Superman cape on like Josh Allen in week four uh, and the most important thing is to make louder noise uh, on the commanders uh, and the Ravens win 34-21 oh that's kind of close to what I was expecting I said 31-17 um, cause again, I, I've been saying it all week and y'all know how the Ravens do. Ravens are just a bunch of trolls straight up. They, they are a troll of a team. And just when you think like, oh man, just when you have your lowest expectations for the Baltimore Ravens in, the speci in a specific area of the team, that's when they end up shining the brightest. So right now everybody's so down on the defense, which they should be because the defense has been down. Um, but I think the defense, they'll, they'll get it together this week for sure. Uh, he also said, um, that's how I stop the Washington Commanders to win. The offense do their thing. What's your opinion on the, the defense? And I respect Jaden about what he's done thus far, but our defense has too many talents not to be uh, higher than 31st passing defense. I think what we got. Uh, I, I think we ain't we 29th Maybe we are 34 Who knows But I don't, we, we somewhere at the bottom That's what I do know He said I hope the Ravens Can listen to the email And uh, and you know and, and say that they know What to do He said And with that my friends The team keep it clean Subscribe to the channel And give Raven love By liking the video I'm out Your boy Hey appreciate you Aaron Thank you for that um, yeah, Ravens, they got to get to Jaden Daniels, man. Jaden Daniels is a baller. He, he is he is a baller. But one thing that we uh, got to mention about um, when it comes to the teams that the, the commanders have gone against, I think that really plays a big part, too. That's something that's very important to look at because their record is what their record is. What They 4-1, they and one, I believe. They lost their first game, and then they ain't looked back since. Ravens lost their first two games, and they struggled a little bit, but they ain't looked back since. Uh, so something's got to give. But their games, their wins have come because their first game was against the Bucks, but then they played the Giants. They played the Bengals. Uh, they played the Cardinals, and they played the Browns. Uh, all losing teams, all teams that – just have been really really struggling uh a lot this year um and again not to take anything away from them at all but context is super super important now the ravens they lost they lost to the raiders so it's like oof, are you that good but then and they lost to the chiefs too and chiefs still undefeated um but then they beat the bills like handily they Blew the Bills out. Wasn't even close. Uh, they took care of business against the Cowboys. They were blowing them out. Then they decided, oh, you know what? Let's be ourselves and let them back in the game. You know how that went. And then that Bengals game, oof, that just craziness. Y'all know how that went. Um, so it's it's a little different, a little different. But again, these two teams, they got to match up. No matter who they played before, they got to play each other. So we'll see how it goes in a couple of days. Lie detector. Ooh, where is it? Anyway, this next question came from my guy, Mark JG. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Mark? He said, I hope you and the Florida are safe during Milton. As always, hope you guys are doing well. You and team keep it clean. Just want to reach out and be sure all is well first. 
Appreciate you, Mark. We are good. Thank you, though. Um, he said, now, with all these wide receiver rumors and suggestions swirling around the Ravens, what is that saying to Rashad Bateman? I know Adams' news just died out, but who's to say they aren't looking for another wide receiver or weapon? Ooh, man. Mm. Mm -mm. I heard some stuff, but. I'm, uh, and I, uh, anyway, continue. He said, uh, I know Adams. Oh, anyway, he said, uh, by doing that, someone's time is going to be eaten. And if you get an elite weapon and I feel it'd be Bateman or it could be Nelly. I think Rashad would have would feel he'd been lied to in a sense when they put their eggs in his basket by the team's action and how they backed him in the offseason. If Baltimore got that guy would be a major contradiction. That is true. That is true. You are million percent spot on because. Again, a lot of us, I know myself, I was wondering, like, no, nah, they're not going to just roll with Bateman and that's it, right? Like, we, we expect, we didn't know Bateman had potential before the season started, but I still wanted them to go out and, and get somebody, proven somebody like that, just so, just in case the Rashad Bateman experiment wasn't working, that they would be able to stay ready so they ain't had to get ready. Now, Rashad Bateman, he's been doing his thing, so that's been a good thing. Um, but you're right, if, they're, if they are looking around, at receivers then anyway continuing uh he said yeah it, does, it doesn't it makes it look like they ne not necessarily putting their eggs all in the Rashad Bateman basket or they want to get more out of somebody else's basket he said if you're Rashad or another wide receiver how would you feel if your job uh brought in a guy who's produced more than you who works in your same position I'm thinking from Bateman's perspective with this if I'm being honest I don't care if we trade for a weapon or not I'm always down for quality uh quantity and I agree with you always when you say get Lamar someone who's like that uh the Ravens have invested in Lamar but it's almost half-hearted uh the Ravens go in but haven't gone all in on offense I will say I think we have got to get uh we have got to get bait the ball early and often uh, against the commanders I'm with you with building the bait chemistry if he balls out you know what that would do for his confidence Confidence. Oh, it certainly would. And like I said, with Rashad Bateman, he's a receiver that's like Derrick Henry, man. You just gotta you gotta keep feeding them. You gotta keep finding ways to get them involved, get the ball in their hands, and just let them go to work. Um, because if it's one of those things where they involve him sparingly, and I know every game plan is different, so it all just depends. But if it's one of those things where they don't involve him a lot early on, then then you get moments like you get in the Raiders game. Not that not that there's an excuse for it, but you're you're far less likely to get those moments, in my opinion. If he's touching the ball a lot more And again it's tough It's tough Because like we always say It's only one ball to go around This is a run heavy offense So the receivers They really stay ready So you gotta get ready Type of receivers But we well, all know Anyway he's also said if we make a move, uh, if I'm being honest right now, DeAndre Hopkins just makes way too much sense because of the money and the compensation. Uh, I think about you when I see D-Hop because we were so close to having your top guys on the team together. Clowney and D Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. That would have been crazy. I ain't even think about that like that. So y'all like DeAndre Hopkins, he, he used to be my favorite receiver in the league. In the league. And he... um. When he was with the Texans, he's my favorite receiver in the league. He was just, he was just that dude, man. DeAndre Hopkins was like that, man. And I remember when, um, before he got traded to the Cardinals, uh, the Ravens, I believe they tried, they try. Oh man, and I, oh, I was, I was hurt when he got traded to the Cardinals. But anyway, and then with the uh, Jadavian Clowney, y'all already know what time it is with Jadavian Clowney. Anyway. Uh, he said, I think about you when I see D-Hop because we were so close to having your top guys on the team together. Clowney and D-Hop, your favorite dreadheads last year uh, with Lamar's negotiation and training camp uh, the Clowney signed. Maybe we can get a three-dreaded monster uh, with Henry, Hopkins, and Lamar. <laughs> he said, I, don't, I know Lamar got brave, though. Uh, not, to get, not to get your hopes or imagination going, but scrolling through Facebook and saw Seahawks fans not happy with DK, and DK looks frustrated. You know, I, I was for sure thinking about that last night. Uh, with DK Metcalf, they were talking about how he was halfway going up for the ball. He should have high pointed it better. He had a drop, and they're like, "Oh man, this guy DK." Then I saw some Ravens fans. Say, oh, this the guy who y'all wanted? Y'all wanted a DK Metcalf? And I'm thinking, "Oh yeah, I do yeah." Uh, but yeah, let's we'll, we'll see, man. Mike McDonald, three and zero, started off undefeated. He's three and three. Lost the last three games. Hey, life is crazy, man. Life is crazy. Life is crazy. And John Harbaugh. Started off 0-2, and, and now we don't want to last three games. Life is crazy. But anyway, continuing. He said, uh, just some random thoughts before I get out of here. I'm fine with Andrews because people want to see him eat, but they don't realize his numbers are low because he's doing the dirty work out there with blocking. I feel Mark has a couple of years left being Mandrews because I think we are starting to see Ed Dixon and Dennis Pitta all over again with Likely and Cola. Uh, bring back Cornrow. <laughs> 
Hey, he might mess around and, and put them braids in again. The cornrows. He might. He might mess around and do it again. Uh, he said with Andrews being tired, he. I'm glad you pointed Zoe's defensive numbers to Mike's through the first five games because his only problem is adjusting. He can be a good coordinator, but he's newer to this than Mike ever was. That's another good point. That's a great point. He said, Mike went to college to be a defensive coordinator, but Zach got thrown into the fire faster, so he'll need more time, and I guess that's what Dean Pease will help with. That's such a great point. I forget about that all the time. That's such a great point because, yeah, that's true. He went, he went to Michigan. Mike McDonald went to Michigan, and he was doing his thing over there, and then he got brought back to the – such a great point. He said, I want to say more, but I hold those thoughts. I did order the Revenge Season hoodie. That material is nice, smooth, and warm. Thank you for the cold, bro. No, thank you. Appreciate you, man, for real, Mark. Uh, and he says, stay safe, stay blessed, and ju just know you all can do it. Until next, I'm out like Nick Wright is on Lamar Jackson. Oh, yeah, you know Nick Wright. That boy don't like Lamar at all. And he even publicly said it the other day. Not that he dislikes him, but he said, you, you, said, you guys know I'm, not, I'm definitely not the biggest Lamar guy. Uh, yeah, we, we all know. 